Hi, appreciate that very much. Delighted to be here. It was a little hectic getting here. Uh, we were up in Dallas yesterday evening. Uh, it was a little fundraiser for our middle son, and his name is Rand Paul, and looks like he has a crack at winning the Senate seat oh, up in Kentucky. Uh, tried to explain to him that he was, uh, you know, risking a very good medical practice and uh, why would he want to get into politics? And uh, he told me I had no credibility in that part. <laughs> I cautioned him. So there's always a mixed blessing on what we do in life and uh, uh, you give up something and you go on to do something else. But I actually feel very, very fortunate that I've been able to uh, work both, be, uh, be a medical doctor, deliver a lot of babies, at the same time, participate in an active way in, in political change. So I'm, I feel fortunate that I can do that. Now, Carol is sitting over here. She was with me yesterday, and we came in to this this morning. Uh, Ron, you have had to ratchet up the volume a little bit. Okay. Is there a mic? Is there a mic? Oh, there is no mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> but. Uh, I, I would like to sort of update you today on uh, where I think the freedom movement is because that of course is what we all work in and been working for for a long time and most of the time it's been rather quiescent uh, especially in most of my lifetime it's been very difficult to even recognize in a, in a public way uh, what the freedom movement was all about but I think things are definitely changing I think we live in a different era right now but I um, I got involved back in the uh, uh, interested in this subject back in the 1950s and early 1960s actually as a medical student as a medical residence when I started uh, reading and studying Austrian economics but it was very difficult to find the information back then and uh, the group that provided the most of the information for me was uh, the group called the Foundation for Economic Education uh, on Irvington on the Hudson with Leonard Reed no internet and uh, no professors in our colleges Nobody on the media talking about it, nobody in the government talking about it, but there was that remnant out there that did talk about it. Because no matter how bad things get, there's always somebody available to try to hold things together and hold uh, the true beliefs and our true values regardless of what the government is, is doing. And this is historic, this is the way it's always been. And uh, yet today, I've come to the conclusion that that group of people is, was much, much larger than I ever dreamed because uh, as I campaigned for the presidency the last couple years, I discovered so many more people than I ever thought there would be. So there were a lot of people like you. I know members and associate, people who associate with the Birch Society are well informed and know about it and that uh, wasn't the great discovery because you've been working at this for a long time. But there were a lot more, a lot more people who had just been turned off with the system, had dropped out of the system. They weren't voting, some never voted, and they were just disgusted with it, and they knew that there was no difference between the Republican and the Democrat Party. And uh, that number was much, much larger. But the other magnificent thing that I discovered in these past two years has been uh, the reception of a new generation of young people who listen to this and are coming our way and accept this wholeheartedly, enthusiastically. So often now when young people come to my office in Washington, teenagers, maybe a 14 year old, 16 year old, high college kids that are coming in and uh, I always ask them, you know, how did you get interested? How long have you been interested? And what, what, ha what was it? Many, many times, almost inevitably, they say, well, you talk about the Constitution and following the Constitution. So they're fascinated with that. And young people tend to have an inclination toward principle more so than those individuals who are in the business community or who have lived with the system and they, they sort of figure, well, you have to go along to get along and they accept it. But young people are more I idealistic. They tell me that, but they uh, also very frequently bring up the subject of the Federal Reserve which is so fascinating to me because, oh, I like what you talk about on money and the importance of this. I've never heard of the Federal Reserve. And they're reading and studying now about the Federal Reserve System and how significant the monetary issue is. Matter of fact, it was the monetary issue that probably, uh, you know, got me interested in politics early on because I was very much aware of what was happening prior to 
August 15th of 1971. The Austrian economist, even as early as 1945, when the Bretton Woods system was set up, which was a pseudo gold standard, and Henry Hazlitt, who was a financial writer and a libertarian writer, he said it will fail, and he was absolutely right. <coughs> but it failed in 19, 1971. When that happened, it just sort of hit me and said, they're absolutely correct on their analysis uh, of, of what's wrong and what's going to happen and predicting the future. Even though through Austrian economics, you cannot predict precisely, I can't tell you tomorrow what the stock market's going to do, but I can tell you that in time, the dollar is going to continue to weaken and uh, eventually probably self-destruct. And uh, that was predicted by Mises as early as 1912. And sure enough, in 1913, we uh, allowed our government to give us the Federal Reserve System. Now we have a four cent dollar compared to the dollar we had in, in 1913. Uh, uh, and what, what are we doing now? That system of government, the system of government that runs the post office and they and they run Amtrak and they were in charge of 700 billion dollars of uh, of TARP funds, uh, all wasteful, corrupt spending. Now, the ones who believe that they represent the people who need help and and the people who need taken care of and they grab the moral high ground and say. That's what we want to do, is turn over the control of medical care to the people that have destroyed our country. Washington is still a mess. They haven't gotten the message of what this new generation has endorsed and what another group of people have been encouraged to get more engaged in. And uh, yet we're in the middle of big changes. All you have to do is watch the television. There's a great deal of significance about the anger expressed uh, at these town hall meetings. Some of it might be orchestrated. The other day, last night, matter of fact, I was on uh, Cooper, Anderson Cooper's show, and he asked me, oh, is this all a, all a plan? Was the Republican Party able to set this up and, and conspire to do this? I said, if you're giving them too much credit, they're probably not capable of doing that. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I think what's happening is that uh, the welfare state is alive and well. There's still a lot of people out there, but even those who are on the receiving end realize it's coming to an end. They know what we know, that it's not a viable system, and they're getting concerned. Who's going to get it? Is it the, will the big guys get all of it, like they've been getting right now? The, the people getting bailed out, the huge salaries that people are, are reta and retirement benefits? banks being bailed out and Goldman Sachs being benefited by and they see that so when they think about food stamps and housing programs and and uh, free education and, and free uh, free medical care they get worried and concerned and yet the people who are still working for a living who understand that, that this is this can't continue it has to end uh, those two are in conflict and they're and they're fighting with each other and that's what's going to change things because it is not sustainable. This is not sustainable and that's why the freedom movement is so important to explain this economically, uh, morally, constitutionally, in a practical sense. We have all those arguments on our side and yet we seem to continue to lose this fight. We've lost it for the last 70, 80 years, it's especially since the depression. But the seeds were planted before that. 1913 was a horrible year the income tax, the Federal Reserve, and then also the change in the way they were electing uh, senators. And then at that period of time, significant change in our foreign policy, where we became the policemen of the world, make the world safe democracy. And here, what we were doing was nothing more than developing a foreign policy designed as a police force and a protectorate for some of the corporate interests around the world. And that all, those seeds were planted but the depression really brought out has been a continued growth of that at the expense of liberty. But now we're at the crisis point because we are out of money and not only that, we're, uh, we're out of wealth too. We're